Broadcasting live on the UnitedWest.org and AM Radio Network and simulcasting on DirecTV, iHeartRadio, Roku, and the World Wide Web, this is Enemies of the State with Tom Trento. Well, uh, on today's show, Thursday, May 14th, 2015, no enemies. I know the name of the show is Enemies of the State because of our investigative work dealing with many of the enemies of the West, many of the enemies of Israel, many of the enemies of the United States of America. But today, a breath of fresh air. Only friends. Only friends. Unless Gano has gone over to the dark side, has he, by any chance? <laughs> no, sir. Yeah, He's no. still with us? <laughs> okay. Michael Gano, toward the end of the hour, we also have uh, our very dear friend reporting from the Knesset, Jerusalem Jane. Uh, Arya Gozi will give us a little insight into some of the national security concerns. And in just a minute, a new guest on our show, new friend from Israel, Skyped in. We'll bring him on shortly. But it's a beautiful day on the 14th of May, Thursday, 2015, in South Florida. Many people starting to come and visit. And when you're here, we want you to listen to us every single day, 4 o'clock East Coast time, commercial free. No commercials. We don't go for 10 minutes and then you listen to somebody selling soap or fixing your car, any of that. No, we don't know how to make money on this show, so we just go day by day. But if you could help with your donations, that's much appreciated. WSBR Radio, 740 on the dial out of Boca Raton from Miami to Palm Beach. And then over in the Tampa Bay area, WHFS 1010 in the Tampa Bay area. But worldwide on uh, our website, theunitedwest.org, on teapartycommunity.com. And many folks take our show and shoot it all over the place. Our recent uh, live stream in Garland, Texas, where we were in the middle of the uh, Islamic State's jihad attack, uh, we were there live streaming. That show has well over a quarter of a million viewers right now. And that's a, we spoke about that yesterday on our show entitled Conservative Cowards with Dr. Andy Bostom. We'll be continuing on it because a lot more information is coming about about the, uh, the jihadis there, the relationship to the Islamic State, the relationship to various mosques around the United States. And as we have been maintaining, maintaining, this is a watershed event that occurred, which we were part of, May 3rd, 2015. And you know what? No matter when you deal with the issues of national security or of Islamic jihad, uh, inevitably, that little tiny country that just wants to be left alone a little tiny country, reconstituted, Israel's 4,000 years old, reconstituted in 1948, May 14, on that same hour that the United Nations recognized the legitimacy of Israel being a state for Jewish people. Uh, six Arab nations attacked, and uh, the fighting, uh, for all intents and purposes, has not stopped even until today, continues, and we're going to hear today about some of the developments of Hezbollah in the southern part of Lebanon, but something very unique happened in 1948 when the uh, Arab nations attacked. Uh, a unique group of people uh, decided to stand with Israel, and they, they stand with Israel through these 67 years of extremely difficult time. And on our recent visit, our tour that we took back in March, and we're going again, March 14th to the 24th in 2016. Contact me, Tom, at theunitedwest.org if you're interested. Uh, on these trips, we go up to the northern border of Israel. And one area that we just find uh, fascinating continually is uh, a kibbutz way up in the uh, northeastern part of Israel called uh, Kibbutz Mizgav Am, Mizgav Am. And when we go there, we, we visit uh, one of the military bases close by, and it's usually manned by soldiers from this very unique, unique community that sided with Israel 67 years ago. And for those of you who 
follow the show, you know I'm talking about the Druze community. D-R-U-Z-E, Druze community. Well, we are uh, fortunate and privileged to have one of the, uh, the leaders of the Druze community, a, uh, an Israeli Druze member, someone who has uh, worked extensively in Israel, promoting Israel, worked in politics, worked in uh, public relations. And uh, we ran across our special guest through uh, Jerusalem Jane, doing her work there. And he was very helpful to <laughs> Jerusalem Jane, helping her get in a position to report back from where you'll see later on from the Knesset. She's in the Knesset today reporting back. So let's bring on, please, Mendy Safadi. Mendy, are you there? Let's give him a hand. There he is. Hey, how are you? Welcome to the show, Mendy. Very nice to Thank have you. you here. Thank you. Um, whoops. Oh, <laughs> got stuck. <laughs> that happens sometimes. You got wires all on you. Uh, sir, very nice to have you here. We have you, uh, I don't think Zionists was supposed to be there, just uh, Israeli Druze. No, he said Zionist. He oh. said Zionist. He told him to Oh, you, put Z you want your name, Israeli Druze Zionist? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's better. Um, we have spoken quite a bit about the Druze community, but it's still very confusing to people. You know, who are the Druze? Where are you from? What do you do? I want to explore a little bit of that, but tell us a little bit about yourself. Introduce yourself to our our large radio audience and uh, TV viewing audience on the internet. Okay, the, the Druze community start uh, uh, together with the Jewish in Egypt. Uh, our uh, prophet is uh, Jethro from the Bible, the father of, uh, of Zipporah, Zipporah, the wife of uh, Moses. Uh, so uh, uh, Jethro was one of the advisors of uh, Paro in Egypt. And uh, when he uh, heard that uh, uh, one of the people uh, told uh, Paro to uh, to kill all the Bnei uh, Israel, the, the sons of Israel, uh, so he came to uh, Moses and uh, told him, uh, take your uh, people out of uh, Egypt, and then it start uh, the Jewish uh, go from uh, from Egypt out. Uh, with in the way in Sinai to uh, to Israel, and he uh, go uh, together with them uh, all the way, and uh, in the in the Bible you can uh, you can see uh, some actions what where uh, uh, Jethro is is uh, inside with uh, with uh, Moses, uh, and the Jewish community live in in uh, the Israel land. The Israel land it's uh, not only uh, Israel for today. The Israel land, it's uh, uh, Israel, uh, Syria, uh, Jordan, uh, Iraq, uh, uh, Lebanon, all this, all this area, it was uh, the, the Israel land, uh, uh, Eretz Kinan, uh, the, uh, the, the land of Kinan, it was, uh, so the Jews uh, stay here uh, all the years, always the, they was in the uh, in the Carmel, in the Galilee, in uh, the Golan Heights, uh, in Lebanon, in Syria, uh, Jordan, a little bit in Jordan, and uh, when uh, when the uh, uh, in 1936, 37, uh, start the action of the Arab against the Jewish. Uh, uh, the Druze stand stand uh, near the the Jewish and help them to uh, to fight against the Arab. And uh, it's before uh, we know that uh, will be a Israel country. And from uh, the 1848, when Israel uh, uh, f be free country, uh, the Druze uh, uh, go together with the Jewish, and they are. Uh, serving the army uh, till now, and uh, uh, Israeli like uh, all uh, all uh, the the Jewish people, and uh, the support of of the Druze community f uh, for Israel and for the Jewish people, it's uh, start from the days of uh, our prophet uh, Jethro, and we uh, finish that way, and we uh, go with this way of uh, our prophet. That's a fascinating background, going back to Moses and, 
and Jethro. We'll have to explore that when we have you on for a longer segment. But folks are, are confused uh, often thinking, well, the Druze religion is part of Islam. Um, is it no, no. not part of Islam at all? It's not, it's not part of, of the Islam. I, I, I want to uh, uh, tell you something. You know the Islam, uh, when, when Muhammad starts with the Islam, he say, Aslim or uh, be Muslim or die. Okay, the Druze was a small community in, in the uh, Middle East. And when, when uh, uh, Muhammad uh, came to the, the Druze area, uh, the leaders say, if, if you have uh, any community more strong of you, you go with there, but st still with your belief, don't, uh, don't leave uh, your, be your belief. Your, uh, uh, so, because that, they, uh, they think that we go from the Islam. Uh, after, in the 11th century, when uh, Muhammad died and uh, start the uh, the problem with the Khalifa and the Islam start to uh, 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 everyone make for him uh, uh, part of the Islam. Uh, so then uh, the Islam it's uh, not mo any more uh, strong. So the Druze back to their uh, regime, okay? But they they don't part. They, uh, the Druze is not part from the Islam. Okay, uh, that that's very right. right. Tom, Tom, yeah, I got, see, I got, I got a news flash. I didn't know this, but this I, I'm, I'm looking at this, and it says on the Wikipedia thing, it says uh, the group originating from the Near East who said identifying themselves as Unitarians. So it's my brothers in the, oh, in the Middle East. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this, Mendy. On our last you trip, know, the history, the history of the Druze, uh, written by uh, Muslims or uh, Druze who live in the. Yeah. Uh, Islam area. Of so, you know, the truth of the Islam, it's not the real uh, truth uh, of the history. Um, and uh, another thing uh, that, uh, you know, uh, at this day we see in Syria and Iraq how, the, uh, how ISIS uh, moved people from, uh, from the Christian and from the Yazidis to, to be Muslims. The same thing they do uh, when Muhammad was and anyone told you now, uh, ISIS is not the Islam, ISIS is the real Islam. Okay, no, that makes a lot of sense. A um, couple of things. And uh, we, when we were on our recent trip there back in March, we went to this Druze uh, area. There's only about, what, a, a couple of hundred thousand Druze left? Is that the, the proper number? It's 130,000. 150,000 left. And your history right. of serving in the Israeli army and, and, and yeah. loyalty to, to Israel is amazing. But, um, yeah, there's actually there's a picture with our producer, Damon, with uh, some of the Druze community up on, uh, in that northeastern area up in the, the Galilee. Uh, but in that picture, I, uh, I met with a commander, and I gave him my card, and I recently was contacted... Um, and I don't want to show that picture right now. Uh, I was contacted uh, by some of the, the family members, and they yeah. invited my team and I to their Druze community next time we're up there to share in dinner and just uh, an evening with Druze families up in that community. I thought that was amazing. You're welcome. When you come to Israel, uh, we go together to... Uh to the, the Druze community, to, to meet them, to, uh, to hear from him, and uh, to, to listen uh, how they loyalty to Israel, and more and more to learn how to love Israel. That's fantastic. Uh, you know, many Jewish people, many Jewish people learn from the Druze how to, lo to, to love uh, Israel. That's, that's tremendous. Um, we only have a couple of minutes left with you on this opening segment. We're going to have you back and, and go into more detail. But what kind of work uh, do you do with, with the government? How have you helped the government? And uh, how could folks here in America, Jews, Christians, others, help uh, Israel right now in these difficult days? 
Listen, I uh, when when I do the the uh, PR for Israel, I I go to the uh, uh, sides who uh, don't like Israel, and I to change their mind. Uh, when uh, when the Syrian resolution will start, uh, I make a connect with the with the Syrian uh, opposition. Uh, you know the uh, uh, the people from the Syrian opposition, and and uh, I talk with them and make the connect between them and between the uh, government in Israel. Uh, you know. I uh, I success to change their mind because I come with the truth, I uh, uh, and I show them uh, the law, the law of, of the of the regime of Syria and the Arab uh, regimes, uh, and I show them the truth uh, about Israel, and uh, everything we do uh, we uh, we show uh, the world how Israel it's. Uh, uh, the hum uh, humanitarian uh, country, um, you see, in in uh, uh, everywhere we open uh, the hospital for uh, uh, for the Syrian people uh, by free. Uh, you know, in Jordan they pay about uh, the hospital. In Turkey they pay about the hospital. In Israel they make it in f by free. Uh, and we support them uh, with uh, humanitarian aid, you know, uh, many things. So with the time when they see the, the, the truth about Israel, uh, you see the change, you, you, can, you can feel the change. The people uh, now f from the Syrian opposition uh, talk, uh, talk uh, uh, for Israel and they uh, support Israel. Uh, because they uh, uh, all all the uh, the information that uh, uh, learned by Assad 14, 40 years uh, in Syria, they see that uh, it's not true. And uh, when we when we uh, when they meet Jewish people and Israeli people, uh, they see that uh, uh, very different. Uh, uh, the 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 truth and uh, and what Assad uh, say. That's uh, that's fabulous that you're doing this public relations work in some very difficult and controversial countries. But you you're you're gifted for it. Obviously, you've helped, as I said, Jerusalem, Jane, and we appreciate that. We're going to have to let you go right now, Mendy. We got a uh, whole bunch of people from Israel that are coming in for our Israel uh, update. Thank you very, very much, and stay in touch with us, whatever we can do to help. And when we come there, Thank we'll go with you to one of the Druze communities and have a wonderful big feast. How about that? You're welcome. You'll be welcome. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Mendy Safadi, ladies and gentlemen, just uh, uh, our, a, a new friend that we've met, and uh, Jerusalem Jane, you'll hear from her in a little bit. He's helped her quite a bit uh, navigate through the issues at the Knesset in order for her to be there reporting back for the United West. He helped put all of that together. And uh, we have just opened up uh, at Jerusalem Jane's Facebook page, um, Israel One Nation. You can donate to her. It could be tax deductible. We're helping her set all of that up. But we'll bring her around a little later. Yeah, I'm glad what do you think awesome. about the Druze? Man, yeah, only 150,000. I think we need to talk to Can't you. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. <laughs> I think we need to talk to Nola about the explanation of the Druze religion now. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know Nola's going to get a little bit of an ear lashing from me. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading here in Wikipedia. It says group I need Ari to turn his video on. Group originating from the Near East who self-identify as Unitarians. Come on. Well, I mean, how obvious is that, you know? Well, he had, he had a very interesting uh, analysis coming out of Jethro that that's basically their prophet. This predates Islam by about, uh, oh, I don't know, almost 2,500 years. So, um, but his point was, when Islam came along, everybody's a Muslim. Same thing that's going to happen in Garland, Texas, when Islam comes along. Everybody's a Muslim, no matter what you believe. But these guys have held firm in their beliefs. They're uh, very, very loyal to Israel. Now, their territory spills over, 
It's not a neat, clean line into Syria because you said, remember he said that it was all part of Israel. So there are Druze in Syria right now that have a very difficult time. If they show allegiance to Israel, how long do you think that's going to last? So they've got to kind of walk a tightrope. They've been there hundreds and hundreds, thousands of years. They can't just say, uh, we're moving 200 miles you know, to the west. They've got to stay there. But they got to kind of play it, uh, you know, carefully. Um, but w we've, we've actually been in Drew's restaurants. I've met many Drew's, some of the most uh, heartfelt, warm people you can imagine. And they've had, a, they've had a deal with being a conquered people for many, many years. They are more of Israeli patriots than half the population of Tel Aviv. You know, that's a sad point, but you're right. Um, that is really, really sad. All right, who do we have next up? Well, we're supposed to have a Gozi, but he's not picking up his Skype. Come on, Gozi, <laughs> you know how to do this? Man. Okay, actually, here he comes. Here he here comes. comes. Okay. Hey, we got him now. We got him now. We there have he him. Is. There, there he is. is. Okay. I don't see anything yet. Well, uh, you don't have to see it. We know we he's here. Well, we while you're getting him ready, let me, uh, let me do a little commercial for next, uh, the 20th. Our show on May 20th. You can read this, Extortion 17. We are going to um, we're going to have uh, Don Brown, Don Brown, who's a JAG officer, retired JAG officer, judge advocate, general, U.S. Navy. He's written a phenomenal book, Extortion 17: The Shootdown of SEAL Team Six, and uh, this is the audio of it. It's not out in. Uh, and that is different than Billy Vaughn's book, Betrayed. Okay, Billy will be here in studio while we Skype Don in. Billy and Don are obviously Correct. friends. So just so people know, it is not the same as Billy Vaughn's Betrayed. No, uh, much is coming out now because more research and investigation have been, has been done. May 20th, Extortion 17. On Friday, today's the 14th. On Friday the 15th, we will have a Billy Vaughn in studio and a couple of uh, Gold Star fathers, fathers that lost their, their sons. And we think... Uh, Greg Buckley is going to be here. Um, his son was, uh, was shot and killed by a fellow friendly Afghan, and also the father of uh, one of the kids that died looking for uh, Bo Bergdahl. That's this coming Friday. Good stuff. But right now, we're going to Israel to our good friend, Ari Agozi. Let's, uh, let's see what Ari's up to. Hello, Agozi. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Uh, we're, we're doing well. We're alive and well. We're back. We've been through a little, uh, little excitement. We come to your country with all the terrorism, all the attacks, <laughs> all that stuff. Nothing happens. We go to Texas, one of the safest Texas states ball. in the country, and we get attacked by jihadis in Texas. I know. I know. Crazy world. Crazy, Crazy world. world. What Crazy incompetent world. terrorists they were, too. <laughs> yeah, they were a little incompetent, those guys. Uh, and we thank God for that, let me yeah. tell you. You got a bunch of stuff going on there, don't you? Yes, uh, as we speak now, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is completing his cabinet just now. In th these minutes in Jerusalem, all the uh, members of Knesset are coming to his office to see what, what's left for them, uh, what job uh, will they have in the new cabinet. He wants to uh, swear the cabinet tomorrow. And uh, I think that he, uh, he understands there is a sense of urgency because the world, uh, Europe and the U.S., are uh, seeing the uh, very, uh, very uh, weak coalition that he has as a good point to put some pressure on Israel. And we heard today that the European uh, want to, uh, again, to uh, boycott uh, Israeli products. Uh, the Vatican is putting uh, pressure on Israel. Uh, I can hear between the lines from a uh, spokesperson of the White House and the uh, State Department that they are also uh, preparing some pressures on Israel, uh, thinking that the uh, fragile coalition is a good time to put pressure on Israel. And, uh, but objectively, when, when you look at what goes on on the North Red border with Syria and Lebanon, uh, Things are very serious without any, any outside pressure from Europe and the U.S. Uh, Assad is... I wait, wait, A.R., before you, before you go there, uh, we got to help out our audience um, because we get new people. Our, our show is growing on the radio and uh, on Internet TV. 30 minutes after Tom Trento, 
your hosts, Enemies of the State, in uh, the production room are Mark and Damon, uh, our special guest, Ari Agozi. You keep saying, Ari, that uh, all these countries are putting pressure on Israel. Pressure for what? What do they want Israel to do, thus all this pressure? What, do you, they what want, aren't you doing? Yeah, they, want, they want Israel to sit down with the Palestinians and in two weeks, or three weeks, reach an agreement on a two-state solution. As if, uh, as if the talks are between Switzerland and France. <laughs> they don't understand that this is, this is not, a, a, it's not a real thing. Uh, I, I, I mentioned it in, in previous shows. Uh, no way that in this situation the Palestinians will agree to what Israel sees at the red lines to its, uh, to its um, uh, safety and defense. So uh, the pressure can be from all sides. I don't see Israel uh, reaching an agreement, but the Europeans uh, are living in, an, in La La Land, as we say, and the Americans also in some distant world, some fantasy world, and they think that if they put some pressure on Israel, they will sit like with the uh, nuclear talks in Lausanne, they will uh, uh, drink coffee and eat some beautiful cookies and reach an <laughs> agreement that is not worth the, the paper. That, and I think that Benjamin Netanyahu has made it very clear that he doesn't want um, a second, a second uh, edition of the uh, nuclear talks with Iran. Uh, at this point, there's no point even in beginning talks with the Palestinians. None. Uh, but but uh, the Europeans and the Americans seem to not to understand or they're making themselves as not understanding the situation on the ground. It would be as well, if, yeah, it would be as if we tried to have a peace negotiation between the Garland, Texas shooters and uh, and Pamela, and Pamela Geller, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or Major Nadon Hassal with the army. Like, come on, what are you talking about? Hey, hey, oh, uh, hey Gozi, uh, I read that uh, Abba Ibn, the uh, defense minister, great defense minister of Israel, once said that if the Palestinians said that Israel made the earth flat, right? If Israel made the, they, if they accused Israel of flattening the earth, the vote in the UN would be 161 for, 26 against, and 13 abstaining. Absolutely. <laughs> Abba Ibn, he was the foreign minister of Israel. He was a very, very clever person. And he said, yes, that he said uh, two sayings. One of Abba Ibn, as you just mentioned, and the other one is Ben Gurion that said in Hebrew, uh, we say, um, um is the UN, um shmum, um is nothing. He said that some 60 years <laughs> ago, and he was right. The, the, the UN is worth nothing. And if if the Israel will be will be accused of flooding the world or or I don't or or um, melting the 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 North Pole, the votes will be against Israel. That's correct. Absolutely. And and when we go to Israel, we we haven't told you this because you don't seem to be a big fan of the UN. But when we go there, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna prove it to you in a minute. We all, we often get use of um, uh, we also often get use of. Uh, well, we're gonna show you when it's ready. We'll show. You. We often get used to their vehicles. Take a look at that. Huh. Yeah, just like Uber. And the caption Hamas. reads, yes. just like Uber, but for yes. Hamas. Yeah. Get That's a real UN for, car yeah. that Damon got into, and uh, they let him in. And he said, can I take, your, can I take a picture of this? There they are. It's a useless organization. And, uh, but in any event, we've got a couple of minutes left with you. Here's a question for you. New York <clears throat> Times yesterday came out with a very significant article. Uh, it's a New York Times, very significant article saying that Hezbollah has built a military infrastructure in southern Lebanon, and there isn't a place where a civilian is safe from any sort of counterattack. They built their infrastructure in totally in the civilian population. Is that true? And what does that mean for Israel? That 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 is true. Uh, southern Lebanon and even. Uh, more than southern Lebanon is now Hezbollah land. They have built their tunnels, bunkers, camps, fortifications. They have uh, mass uh, uh, weapon uh, storages there. It, they control. They control the area completely. No civilian can move 
from A to B without getting permission from Hezbollah. And when I say Hezbollah, it's Tehran. Tehran is controlling southern Lebanon and, uh, and uh, um, nothing moves in southern Lebanon. As a matter of fact, in, in whole of Lebanon, Lebanon is in the hands of, 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 of Iran now, totally, totally, totally. And, uh, and uh, it's, um, as I said in, in previous shows, they have something like 100,000 rockets with huge warheads, something like 500 kilograms of, uh, of, um, of explosive in every, each, each warhead. And they're getting, they're getting uh, ready for um, a third round with Israel, but this time with the full support of Iran. And I don't rule out an active Iranian uh, involvement in, in such, a, in such a, a, a confrontation. Of course, they will, they will uh, not wear the, uh, the uniform of the Iranian army, but I, see, I, I can see it very clearly that uh, Iranian officers will be on the ground if, if, if a new round of, of hostilities breaks out. That's uh, no question about it. And, and it gets worse from there, Ari. We're going to have to let you go here for a second. But it gets worse from there that uh, if indeed there, these missiles start flying over, and Israel necessarily has to respond, we all know what the headlines are going to be in the New York Times, Israel killing little babies, uh, because Absolutely. that's the way this war is being constructed. Very, very sad. Absolutely. Uh, all right, Ari, we're going to have to let you go, and uh, stay safe out there. We'll try to stay safe here, too, and we'll catch up with you either later this week or early next week, okay? Thank, thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye. Right, take it easy. Ari Gozi. It's good having friends right in the middle of all the stuff out there so that uh, we can get updated by them. And uh, if things hold together, ladies and gentlemen, and if some of you out there like what we do and you want us to extend our work even to the land in which we're updating ourselves today, Israel, you can help us very significantly. Uh, we, uh, we're on the front lines of all these battles well, we're going to be on the front lines of the battles in Israel, not just with our correspondents on the ground, but with this guy on the ground. This guy on the ground. But with this guy on the ground. That guy right there. Raise your, wave your hand. There's uh, Damon Rosen, our producer. He is, uh, well, where are you in the process of uh, Aliyah? On my uh, on my application, but I have had a uh, pre aliyah. And aliyah is what for? Aliyah our... is uh, when a Jewish person moves to Israel. A non-Israeli Jew moves to Israel. That one there. This one. <laughs> <laughs> not the unicorn. Not, not, not the, the unicorn. unicorn next to me. No. Not the big white guy. Not, not the... this one. That one. That one right there. Right there. <laughs> tourist citizen. Tourist citizen. Not citizen yet. Hopefully soon. So you're going, and one of the uh, one of our plans, uh, Lord willing, the creek don't rise, and somebody writes us some uh, checks so we can do this. Our plan is to have Damon uh, work over there through your donations and to coordinate the work of Ari Agosi, Jerusalem Jane, Michael Gano, and others to have regular reports, daily reports, file, and then in-depth stories done, and then coverage of any activity that takes place directly from Jerusalem, from Tel Aviv. <clears throat> We're going to open a news bureau in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. We have the technical capability. We have the, uh, the technical skill. We have the knowledge base. We have the people willing to do it. We simply don't have what, gentlemen? Money. <laughs> Money. You know, that's what we need. But we do have... Jerusalem, Jerusalem Jane. Jane. All right, Jane. We're going to give Tom a workout today. Tom's getting a workout today. Um, yeah, <laughs> no problem. I'll come over that here. That belly will be I gone get, in no time if Jane we keep having hug. four guests Jane to show. Hug. Give her a hug. Uh, there we go. Hi, Janie. How are you? I'm very good. Good to see you. You are a busy person. How many emails and Facebooks and texts do we get from Jane every five minutes? Many. Many, many, many. I'm over here. I'm on the Temple Mount. I'm arguing with Muslims. I'm in the Knesset. I'm talking to Bibi. I'm flying over here. I'm doing this. What's going on with you? Give us an update. 
Well, things are happening. What can I say? Uh, doors are opening, and uh, I just I got the right connections in uh, in the in Knesset. So I started going to Knesset. Yeah. <laughs> what is the Knesset for? Maybe the new folks just uh, coming on board here. This is where the Israeli government is. This is the legislative okay. state in uh, Israel. This is where all the Oh, look at my picture. <laughs> this is where all the big decisions are being made. This is where, you know, the important people is. This is the place to be. And uh, I started going there. So it's exciting. The, the, the Knesset is the, the government seat. That would yeah. be like the U.S. Congress. And there she is in the journalist wing. And, uh, yeah, you're in a journal. You have credentials to, to get there. Earlier in the show, we had Mendy Safadi on, I know, who, who helped you. Wonderful guy. And... Yeah. Um, you're now able to go in and report back. What were you reporting on uh, yesterday and today? What took place? Well, you know, we had the election down here, and uh, Benjamin Netanyahu uh, was appointed the prime minister again, and uh, he was actually asking to extend the, the government from 18 ministers to 20. Maybe Mendy was talking about that earlier. So uh, when, a, when a law has to be... Uh, you know, they have to vote three times before a law is legal down here. So I went uh, today, they were voting for the second and for the third time. And, uh, you know, it's Hebrew and my Hebrew is not that good. <laughs> but uh, I was. And uh, it was just exciting to see the government working here in Israel. And all the politicians were there and they were voting and running back and forth to press the button if they wanted to vote yes or no. And it passed. It passed. So now BB can... Uh, point out 20 new ministers and uh, they are going to be sworn in tomorrow actually okay and uh, 42 minutes after the hour 42 minutes after four o'clock on the east coast tom trento your host enemies of the state the boys are in the control room the girl jerusalem jane is in jerusalem live right now as we're speaking on may 14th thursday she has uh now has press credentials to travel throughout the knesset and um, Damon is uh, chomping at the bit to get out there and help you with some of this work, which we plan to do uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, do we have any videos? She filed some videos. Yeah, we have two videos. Let's, uh, let's take a look at your video, then you can tell us what it's all about. Bring him in. You got him. Okay. Actually, hold on. Hold on. Oh, you want to bring him you, Yeah, you have him, Mark. Oh, okay. Sorry. Let me bring him back up. I, do, I, I made videos today when they were voting in the, in the government today, yeah. I have a, this is it. They play music in the Knesset? Is that not one of your videos? Uh, That's not, okay, I'm sorry. Wrong cue. We'll, 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 we'll bring it back in. Was that your video? Oh, there it is. Oh, here it is. Yeah, I, I think it's my video, but it's not my music. No. <laughs> there we go. We got him. No, so, but um, hi, when I'm when I'm sitting up there in Knesset, you're not allowed to speak. So I, I'm only videotaping, but I'm not really allowed to speak. Me, but I did sound a bit today. All right, let's so start it again here. So, oh, here we go. Hi, Listen this up. is Jerusalem Jane reporting for Israel One Nation and some yes. talk show the United West. If you look behind me, you can tell I just stepped outside. I have been inside Knesset. Today, Benjamin Netanyahu had a proposal to expand the government from 18 ministers to 20. And there was a second and a third vote about that today. And uh, I was inside Knesset and uh, watching this debate back and forth, back and forth, people running back and forth every time they had to vote. Uh, their name was being called out and they had to say yes or no. Uh, quite the experience, actually. Kind of, it seemed a little bit like a kindergarten, and at the same time, uh, you can tell these guys are having fun and they like each other and they vote. And uh, well, the the bill passed, uh, the vote, the new law passed, and uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is now allowed to point out 20 new ministers in his new government that he is forming. He has to name them, and that government has to be sworn in no later than Monday next week. And uh, we'll see who he's going to appoint to new ministers. It's all very exciting. It's an exciting time here in Israel with the new government uh, and the new minister being named. And uh, I am enjoying. <laughs> you are enjoying your work as a correspondent. Now, you ever see these shows where they raise money? You know, you show the, the little sick dog or the sick kid, and then there's an appeal for funds and all that. We're going to do the same thing here. Our campaign is going to be Buy Jerusalem Jane a microphone. 
buy Jerusalem Jane a microphone. But this is a one-woman wrecking news crew. Usually, these news teams have four, five, six guys, engineers, microphones, cameramen, light men, all of that. She goes by herself with a little tiny phone, files these very interesting reports, doesn't even have, ladies and gentlemen, a microphone. Is there anyone out there that can donate to Jerusalem Jane so we can get her a microphone so the wind noise isn't as bad as it is? Yeah, it was windy today. Uh, that's why it sounded like this. And you're right, I only have my little smartphone making videos, so it's not that professional. I'm going to come save you, honey. <laughs> I'm going to bring Thank you a baby. camera and a microphone, and we're going to make magic. <laughs> make news yeah. magic, you and Schmucky. Um, we, we, I think, uh, with that appeal I just put out, I think we can step up the, uh, the equipment a little bit and uh, get you at least a microphone to, uh, to file these reports because I think um, you, you can see God's hand in your life. I think you're going to be put into some very unique positions. You're developing amazing relationships with your work, your public relations work, and you're going to have open door access uh, because of who you are, what you do, and we want you to be ready at that point uh, to to file these, these uh, yeah. very professional reports. Because you're good. You're good on camera. You understand the issues. People like you. So you're uh, with us. we got to let you go right now because we have your friend coming up from the other part of Israel. Okay. And, and uh, he's, he's, he was at, I think, an anti-Semitism conference. You're at the Knesset. Why? I thought he loved the Jews. Why is he at an anti-Semitism conference? Yeah, we're going to find out. We're going to ask Gano why he's learning to be an anti-Semite. Yeah. That's all about. That makes no sense. But you're at the Knesset covering that. He's at a conference covering that. Agozi's looking at the northern border. And uh, Mendy told us all about the Druze community. This is a very good update on Israel today. Anything you yeah. want to share with the audience before we let you go? No, I just want to say keep up standing for Israel. Really, keep up standing for Israel where, wherever you are in the world. Pray for Israel and come to Israel. We want to see you here. That's the most important thing. The Jews wants to see you here. All right. Thank you very, very much, Jerusalem Jane. See you, uh, you guys. next week. Shalom, honey. Um, Bye. Well, what we do, folks, with our, our, our friends and correspondents out there in Jerusalem, we try to bring them on for an update. Each week, we do a lot of work, obviously, on national security, the Israel situation. We bring them on for a uh, weekly update, but they are ready at a moment's notice to go anywhere in that country to report. And there's several more. Jeremy Deary we've had on. We're going to bring him back. Um, quite a few people around the state. But uh, somebody that is like a, the proverbial Mexican jumping bean... But he's an American, the American jumping bean. We're going to give him, Tom's getting the work. Tom's right? getting, tell me you want some Gatorade, I'm buddy. I'm all over the place. <laughs> Good no, man, we missed you. We haven't seen you for a while. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, he did not get his mic on yet. <laughs> Two hours he's been standing by and he's putting his equipment together. We need equipment for a Gano. Put your in. ears in, Schmeckle. Put your ears in, Michael. What's up, guys? Hey, how, how you doing, doing, man? Good to see you. Look up here in the lens. You know that. You're an actor. You're you an know actor. that. Come on. Come on, actor boy. Come on, Hollywood. Come Act on. like you've been there. <laughs> What's up? We're, uh, we missed you uh, last week. I think we, you know, we had a little situation last week. I don't know if you heard about that. Yes, I did. And uh, I'm glad you guys are safe. Appreciate your prayers and concern. It was... Uh, uh, I don't think at any point we were in physical danger. It was uh, right. mitigated very, very quickly. Uh, mitigated means dead terrorists, <laughs> but um, but for we the like police, that yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for the police, and we didn't know. Nobody knew how bad it was going to be. There was explosives, possibly. So your body goes through that fl fight or flight mechanisms. And uh, we're kind of used to this, and we decided to do the fight thing instead of the flight thing. And we did the best we could to, uh, to report on it. But you've had a fascinating couple of days. You're learning to be an anti-Semite. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, what's up with that? Actually, uh, there, you know, it's amazing because... Hold on one second. Give me one second, guys. I'm on TV in the United States. I'm on TV. Tell them so, to uh, shut up. <laughs> yeah, do so, live TV. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. There are 
there are politicians and diplomats and representatives from different organizations from all over the world, and yet this this uh, fifth annual forum on uh, combating anti-Semitism is not even on Fox News anywhere around the world. It's it's unbelievable that Insight to Israel is on the front lines and sharing information about this forum, and there's no other global media here. And Fox News has an affiliate here, so I'm a little shocked by this. And, and tell us what the conference is about and uh, what you've been able to ascertain and observe over the past couple of days. Well, the conference is basically uh, discussion after discussion on how to combat anti-Semitism. And uh, tomorrow is going to be a, a great day because it's when people can get involved by, uh, through different panel discussions in a question and answer scenario. So I've interviewed, been interviewing people from different uh, pro-Israel groups. A lot of them obviously are Jewish, uh, some in the United States and some that exist here in Israel. And basically, you know, it's, what else do I say? It's a forum about talking about combating anti-Semitism. Have they, have they dug down in these workshops or seminars as to the, the observable root uh, the genesis of a lot of the anti-Semitism, say, from Europe or from the U.S.? You know, it's very interesting, Tom. I'm glad you asked that because you and I are both fact-finders and, and we're truth-tellers. And when I've asked people, not, not anyone I've interviewed, it's, it's conversation that I've had with people that when I show them my business card and they see the eye of God, the Megin David and the eye of God over Israel, they, they automatically know where I stand as someone who's not Jewish and a Zionist, and when I question them, okay, what about Islam? What are you willing to do about Islam? And they never want to go there. They don't want to have that discussion. And they actually had, in fact, I talked to, I'm going to have a rabbi on the show, and he and I sat and talked, and he said, Michael, they just had, they had some Muslims from Europe up here on the, on the stand. And the reality is, is that you're not going to uh, reform Islam because I asked this one Muslim from Morocco he said I'm not religious at all my parents were but I still consider myself a Muslim I said okay Muhammad was a bloodthirsty child raping self <laughs> and he said you're absolutely correct but I teach this, the nice side of, of Islam I said but there is no nice side you're eventually going to have to tell a lie uh, in order to teach the nice side of Islam. He didn't have an answer for me. I said, why don't you just come out of Islam? Why? Because you're not going to reform it. And there are people here, look, there's good people and people that think they're doing good. There's one group that wants to actually reform UNRWA in the United Nations. You're not going to reform this. Day. I tell them that. What, are you in a dreamland? Why don't you just stand up, tell the truth, and fight? But, you know, folks want to go along to get along. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's a problem. You would think there'd be a little more resiliency in, in uh, you're in Tel Aviv now, is that where you are? Uh, actually, this conference is being held in Jerusalem. Oh, so you're down in Jerusalem, or up in Jerusalem. <laughs> we up have to Jerusalem. Uh, be careful, Jerusalem is up, though it looks down, it's to the south of, of Tel Aviv. Here, our work here, we've done a tremendous amount of work on the anti-Semitism issues in the United States, particularly on the campuses. And they, they go right back to the hard left, the Marxist socialist left, in collaboration with the Muslim Brotherhood or Muslim affiliated uh, Students for Justice in Palestine, the, the, the Red Green Alliance. So we can, we can see the foundation of it, the genesis of it, we can see the outworking of it, and we're attacking that at its, at its root. And one of their processes or protocols to uh, win dopey people over is to have these interfaith meetings, you know, Jews right. and Christians, all Abrahamic. Then they bring you in in a dimitude way to accept their point of view, which makes you more submissive and subservient. And that's the battle that's being taken place here, and we see it's taking place there. Well, tell us a little bit about Hershey's for Heroes. We know you're all over the place with uh, helping the soldiers out. Guys, I love it. I've been invited to the Iron Dome in Haifa next week. Uh, last week, I attended a graduation down in the Negev Desert. And uh, I was in the old city the other day 
uh, some soldiers invited me to, to, to take a ride along with them from gate to gate around the old city. Uh, unfortunately, there was a gas explosion. It was cut short. Uh, I was only there for a half hour total. It was cut short. And here's the great thing about the Jewish state. There was a gas explosion. An unfortunate little Arab girl was killed. Uh, and Megin David Dome, which is Israel's uh, emergency and blood service, and, and the soldiers were there automatically helping the Arabs out in this, uh, wow, a tremendous explosion. I was not too far from it, and they had to cut it short. But I'm going back. They invited me to come back. Folks, listen, these soldiers need to hear from you as the world gets uglier, and it's not going to change unless we're willing to do the hard work to make it change. And uh, they're shocked and surprised when they see a nerd on a chocolate bar. It's amazing. Hey, guess what? Uh, Damon, tell Michael about how fortuitous our meeting was in Garland, Texas. We met, who did we meet? We met Alexander Thomas. Your, your national <laughs> coordinator in Garland, Texas. Tell him. Uh, well, he was there, and there's a, a big guy looked like a keg, basically. A big barrel-chested guy with a big old cowboy hat on. And, uh, and he's a, a big Zionist, pro-Israel Jewish guy. And he's like, I'm friends with Gano. And so he ended up, because um, the terrorist incident, we ended up hanging out all night with him at, uh, at both the Curtis Colwell Center and the Firehouse. And the hotel. Yeah. Then uh, he had a room in the same hotel that the uh, PD put us up in. Then he spent all the next day hanging out with us. He, he <laughs> got to hang out with the United West till about 3.30 the next day till he had to drive back to Houston. And listen to this. And he blew the chauffeur in the room for us. <laughs> you got any pictures of him? Pull up a picture of him. And in all of that craziness, um, somebody walks up to me, young guy. And says, I appreciate your work, all that. He shakes hands. He puts a $100 bill in my hand, right? So somebody gave me 100 bucks. I, I held on to it. Later on, you know, later on that evening, maybe it was the next morning after the attack, we're talking to Alexander, and he tells us, he's, there he is, look, there's Alexander and Damon right there. He tells us that uh, he's on his way to go see you, and that he's getting a bunch of chocolate bars, so I, I take the 100 out of my pocket, I put it in his hand, I go, there you go, buy some more chocolate bars. So the United West is, has a little donation for you, man. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. You know, Alexander came last year. We met for the first time. And uh, Alexander's actually not Jewish. I said that in a video, and he's like, he looked at me like, I'm not Jewish. And I'm like, well, what? I thought you were Jewish. But uh, we had a great time. We took him down to the Gaza border to a base there, got a ride in a, in a troop transport. He and Iris and I, little Iris, took us down in a red car, and we had a great time. This time, we're going to take a trip to the north oh, and see the soldiers up there. So I'm excited to, to be taking him. All right, well, you're going to have to report back on that. We're out of time right now. Stay very safe there, and anything comes up, give us a call, and uh, we're with it, all right? Love you guys so much. Thank you for what you do. All right. Thank you, too. There he is, Michael Gano, as we're ending Thursday's show, May 14, 2015. Ah, good update from uh, Israel. Did there. we just get four updates from Israel? I could pull it off, man. If you mark the clock so I can read it, then I can stay on. I got that kind of little thing going on. There. Are you blaming the 15 pounds of camel poop in a five-pound bag on me? On the, no, the clock. I said the clock. You're, you're, you're near perfection, Damon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Mark, you've been away for a couple of days. We have one minute. Why don't you take 30 seconds and uh, uh, share what you know. Uh, we got some exciting stuff coming up in the future, and... Uh, can't tell you about it, but it's definitely exciting. All right, we need to raise money. And I found out a way in which we can do that as we sign off on today's show. Right here, ladies and gentlemen, I have... Anybody notice what I have? Yes, I know what those are. Oh, you're going to auction them off, huh? Look at that. What are these? These are four terrorist tickets. Those are the <laughs> tickets from the Draw Muhammad Art Exhibit and Contest from Garland, Texas. We found uh, originals. We have them, and um, starting at $10,000 a piece, the bid starts 
Whoever wants a piece of history, we have. Uh, we'll give you four for a hundred bucks. How about that? <laughs> No, 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 no. no. We, no, we got hey, to we gotta get a little more than that. Yeah, we got to we got to endorse the back of them or something. We, we'll yeah. sign them. Um, we'll get Pamela to sign them, Gear to sign them, like whatever. All right, thank you very much. That's the show for today. Tomorrow, Friday, Billy Vaughn and um, uh, one of the Gold Star dads. We're working on who it is. Uh, we're going to look at uh, Obama's failure with the U.S. military. Take it easy. See. You.